Okay. Rant about Friends. That's right, the classic 90s to 2000s sitcom. Very topical, I know. <laughs> I've been binging the whole series with Rambo, who's never seen it before, and watching it all in a row, I've realized something. Ross is just a terrible person. I don't want to go through with this if it's going to raise the question of us. <laughs> I doubt I'm the first one to come to this shocking revelation, but I just want to talk about it. I'm going to go into this whole thing, like, expecting you to kind of, like, know how the story structure of Friends works. Like, I'm not going to stop and explain all the key little bits and bops of the relationships and whatnot. This, the series is, like, over 20 years old by now, okay? First of all, he portrays the nastiest, most egotistical behavior. He spends the first two-ish seasons swooning over Rachel, yet never enacts on those feelings. Instead, he openly resents her and her current lover from afar, while simultaneously doing nothing to ask her out himself. Wasn't this supposed to be just a fling, huh? Shouldn't it be... Flung by now? Next, when the two finally do start dating, he becomes just dreadful to be around. He tries to control everything about Rachel. In one episode, he barges into her workplace as she openly tries to tell him to leave because he's bothering her, and he just ignores her. Ross, honey, this is very nice, but but I, I've got a crisis. Yeah, but I've got couscous. <laughs> no, instead, he feels justified in invading her workplace and ignoring her wishes because he's jealous that Rachel has a male co-worker. And sometimes they even have small talk, ooh. Ross is just so possessive of Rachel, and honestly every other girl he ends up dating in the series, that he will just become like worryingly jealous. He'll convince himself his partner is cheating on him just because another man exists somewhere in her vicinity. No matter what she says, he'll ignore it. Because on top of his raving jealousy, his other biggest issue is trust. He will not trust his partners. Uh, what's Mark doing answering your phone? Oh, he's just goofing around. Oh, yeah, that's, that's funny. <laughs> and that lack of trust usually ends up being the reason why his relationships fail. But the cherry on top of that cake is that Ross will refuse to take any accountability in his own mistakes when it comes to his relationships. So much so that it culminates to the reason I started this whole rant and I wanted to make this video. Season 10, the final season, Joey starts to date Rachel. Keep in mind, Joey has spent the entirety of season 8 realizing he's in love with Rachel, something he makes very apparent and he changes a lot about himself once he comes to this realization. Okay. When my sisters were pregnant, they got every weird feeling in the book. And it was always nothing. Really? Absolutely. And it's something that he had to give up on because he didn't want to hurt Ross. Man, don't worry about it. No big deal. Yeah, but still, I mean, it should have been me. I'm the dad. Who, by the way, hasn't even been dating Rachel in about four years by this point. But even four years after their breakup, Ross is still so possessive of Rachel that he still can't stand the idea of her dating someone else. But seeing as how she was pregnant with Ross's baby, Joey took the high road and didn't enact on his feelings. So then, Ross and Rachel could figure things out with their new baby. And then the cycle repeats itself. Despite still not being in a relationship, Ross still gets painfully jealous of the idea of Rachel seeing other guys. So Ross instantly tries to start dating other women to get back at her, blatantly not caring about whoever he's dating, and is also only trying to hurt Rachel, essentially just emotionally manipulating every girl in his life. Joey, during this time, manages to find a girl to date. Charlie. After all these seasons of Joey wanting to be with Rachel and deciding he can't, finally, he finally meets a girl who he does like. And it's not another one of these Joey flings types of girls. He likes her a lot. He commits to her. They're in a relationship for a while. But things don't work out. And literally minutes after they break up, Ross swoops in and just instantly starts fucking Charlie. Joey, seeing this, decides now is the time to find finally try actually dating Rachel. Something she is totally on board with because she also has been having feelings about Joey recently. So great, everyone's happy, right? No, wrong. Because Ross is still here and Ross is still the bad guy. Mom, just be calm. For all I know, we're just, we're just hanging out together. 
Right, so just be nonchalant. Ross sees that Joey and Rachel are together, and he just loses his shit. Keep in mind, he has not dated Rachel in six years by this point, and yet he is still so possessive of her that he has a breakdown seeing Rachel with someone else, even though he is currently fucking Charlie. To what? See you guys kissing? I mean, at first I was like, ah! <laughs> Who he also spent a bunch of time fawning over while she was dating Joey. I'm smarter than him! <laughs> In a scarily familiar scenario, we see Ross just resenting these people because he wishes he could be fucking that girl, but she's with another person happily. And then the moment she's actually in his grasp, he just goes back to fawning over the first girl. Even though he has finally found the perfect woman that he's been fawning over for so long, he went on and on and on about how he loved Charlie. She was great. She was perfect. He can't be happy because the other woman he was fawning over is now dating someone else that's not him. But the real kicker is, is Ross, despite constantly drooling after women and getting enraged when they date other people, never does anything to present himself as a good partner for a relationship with them. When he and Rachel were broken up, he was constantly snide, insulting, and yeah, she wasn't great towards him either. It was definitely a back and forth type of thing. But hell, if he wants her to love him again, you'd think he'd show he cares about her in any way. The reason he and Rachel broke up those six years ago is because she wanted a break. A break from us. It was during that moment after he invaded her workplace and ignored her wishes and just went on this giant, huge tantrum because he was so convinced of himself of his jealousy, convinced she must have been cheating on him and would not listen to her when she insisted otherwise. I told you I didn't have the time. Yeah, well, you never have the time. But Ross, do you realize this is the first time in my life I'm doing something I actually care about? Is this about Mark? <gasps> oh my god. Rachel asked to go on a break because how can you have a relationship with someone if they just actively ignore you and do not trust you? And then literally, he just goes and fucks some other girl. A girl that he had shown no interest in before, and in fact, he knew that both Chandler and Joey had been crushing on this girl. It was in fact an ongoing joke about the Xerox girl, and they would talk about her, and even though he had no interest and he knew his two best friends were interested, he decided to just fuck her because she showed him a little bit of, I don't know, kindness? There's another ongoing thing of him just fucking the girls that his friends are interested in. Like, the whole Joey situation is not a new thing that happened. So anyway, Ross goes and he fucks this girl immediately. It's hours afterwards, after Rachel asks to go on break. The next morning, Rachel wants to get back together. She spent some time thinking about it, and he just lies about sleeping with someone else. And then she finds out, because of course she did, and Ross insists he's not at fault. It's actually a long-running gag of the show. We were on a break. I thought we were broken up. We were on a break. That, for all I knew, could last forever. They make merch out of this for some reason. After he had gone on such a big old rant, uh, just certain that she wanted to be fucking this other guy, and then the moment they're on break, he just fucks another girl. Like, it's just instant. That is the painful hypocrisy. For some reason, Ross never thinks he has ever done anything wrong. He didn't think he was wrong for barging into Rachel's workplace. I was gonna give you a chance to apologize to me. For what? He didn't think he was wrong for constantly accusing her of cheating on him, and he didn't think he was wrong when he fucked a girl three minutes after they went on break. I thought our relationship was dead. Well, you sure had a hell of a time at the wake. <laughs> Later on in the series, they try to hook back up. Rachel's biggest thing is that she wants him to admit that he was wrong to go and have sex with this other girl only a few hours after they went on break. And he absolutely refuses to take any accountability that his actions were in any way unjustified. We were on the break! Coffee house? You bet. The same man who insists he was in the right when he fucked another girl and lied about it to his partner after one night of arguing. Now, in season 10, wants to throw a fit about the idea of Rachel dating Joey. They haven't dated in six years. 
And he knows how much Joey is just in love with Rachel, and Ross is in a loving relationship with Charlie, and yet Ross still feels like he's justified in his over-the-top jealousy when it comes to Rachel dating other men. Ross regularly displays the mentality of, if I can't have you, no one can. He thinks he's warranted in lording over multiple women, whether he's actively dating them or not, and yet also becomes consumed with jealousy if they even exist near another man. You dated my sister! But that was different. Why? This is weird for me! <laughs> Ross seems to display this mentality that he always has some sort of possessiveness over someone if he's dated them before. Even his ex-wife, who is now in a loving relationship with Susan, Ross still tries to wedge himself between them constantly. Susan's Carol's 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 friend. Life partner. Like buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and it lasts for years, almost a whole decade. People always talk about Ross and Rachel from Friends as the quintessential will they won't they plot, but no, that's actually hilariously wrong. Ross and Rachel date very briefly and then spend way more time being resentful exes than they ever did trying to get back together. Now to be fair, there are a couple of different factors to talk about in Ross's defense. The first thing is, this is a sitcom. This isn't real life. Things are intentionally exaggerated for the sake of comedy. I get it. And Ross and Rachel's relationship regularly jumps back and forth with being played up for laughs or being the serious dramatic moments for the episodes. That's sort of what makes it difficult discussing it. It's hard to know what's meant to be taken seriously and what's meant to just be a jocular moment. The show tries to play it both ways and I don't think it succeeds in either of them. By all means, their relationship and the show in general was at its best when the real focus shifted over to Chandler and Monica. Oh. Oh. How could we have let this happen seven times? <laughs> Their relationship, keeping it a secret at first, slowly revealing it to the others, their wedding, trying to have kids, that's all a much, much stronger focus. It naturally involves the rest of the cast for every step of the way, how they keep their secret, who learns about their dating, and how. Ross and Rachel help with the wedding stuff, Phoebe helps with the baby stuff. Like I said in the beginning, I'm sitting down and re-watching the whole thing, binging the episodes in order, and finally watching the show this way made me realize realize that Ross and Rachel are like the worst parts of the show. Every other character with their plot threads and their antics are vastly more entertaining, heartbreaking, and funny compared to the milk toast shit that comes from these two. She, she was different. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> While everyone else is growing, evolving, and developing in new ways, Ross and Rachel seem cursed to constantly repeat the same old plot threads with their terrible relationships. And then the second thing is, Rachel isn't that much better than Ross in this regard. She is also rather petty. She spends whole seasons needling Ross, teasing him in his dates. By all account, it seems like she also isn't that interested in letting Ross be happy with someone else. The biggest difference between the two is, once Rachel does start dating someone, she seems to entirely forget about Ross. Ross is just much more consistent with his awful jealousy. Even when he's dating people, he still obsesses over Rachel. Rachel. So at the end of the day, what was the point of this video? I don't really know. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it was just something on my mind while watching Friends again. Aspects of the show that was once painted as comedic now I realize is kind of problematic. And Friends is hardly the only example of this. I've seen plenty of people talking about how lots of our classic sitcom stars were actually the worst ones in hindsight. The painful toxicity between Ross and Rachel is far from the only thing in the show that's aged like milk. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Are you gay? There's a lot of homophobic jokes, especially in the early seasons when it comes to Carol and Susan. And you never knew she was a lesbian. 
back in the day when just mentioning someone was a lesbian was apparently all that counted as a joke. Eh. Also, the entire thing is really, really fat phobic. Like, I remembered that Monica used to be chubby when she was younger, and that was the center point of several jokes, but I hadn't realized that the show uses that as a joke all the time. I thought it would only happen when we saw her in the past, back when she was overweight, but no, it's nearly every single episode where someone makes some joke in regards to the fact that she used to be fat. It's just constant. <laughs> Christmas looky? Christmas cookie? <laughs> I know, shocking, right? A show from the late 90s wasn't very progressive? Who would have guessed? I do still like the show, but definitely my enjoyment with it has changed nowadays, which I think is important. As we age and grow, I think it's cool to look back at the things we watched growing up and reflect on how they could be better. Nothing's perfect, after all. I don't know, just some food for thought while I was rewatching an old favorite. So yeah, have you had any weird revolutionary thoughts while watching Friends or any other old sitcoms for that matter? I know Friends is, at the time, it was considered super progressive. Shout out to my $10 patrons, you're all amazing. Nako, James Dodds, Cool Duck, Andrew, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, Classy Critic, Sunny Shy, Azoth, Great Bar, Pentimenta, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Zero to Hero, Keithan, Isaiah, Joseph, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, and Virus. But yeah, um, if anything you've noticed about old sitcoms that haven't aged very well, what are your thoughts about the dynamic between Ross and Rachel, or the thoughts that sitcoms often portray these very toxic or not very healthy dynamics between two people in a sitcom? mostly as comedic? I don't know how I feel about that. I think we could do better than that. But yeah, any and all thoughts and opinions about friends, other sitcoms, anything I said, leave them in the comments below. I would love to see them. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.